So it has been a good couple of years since I've installed Arch Linux in any capacity. Now, I've installed something like Arco like well before my two-year challenge started, but that's not the same. So what I wanted to do today was actually install Arch Linux to see what's changed. Now, when I say I'm going to install Arch Linux, I want to find out exactly how far the Arch installer actually has progressed, because when I last installed it, it was brand spanking new. So... That's what we're going to do today. We're going to install Arch Linux in a VM and see exactly how easy it is to install Arch Linux. So let's go and do that. But before we do, first, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really helped the channel. And second, this video is a little weird in that I've already recorded the vast majority of it. I'm talking to you after I've done all the work. And all the voice stuff you hear is going to be me talking over my work, right? So I'm going to be doing a voiceover. So it's going to be a little weird. If I don't time things out correctly, just know that I'm a noob. You already knew that, so it shouldn't be that hard. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the Arch Linux install. So upon first boot, I just noticed that it looks exactly the same. I've also noticed that they still actually haven't told you about Arch install because I would assume that they'd want you to use Arch install, but maybe they don't. But they just give you a link to the installation guide, just like they always have. Now, I happen to know that the command to get to arch install is just arch install. And I ran this like I used to or when I first encountered this installation method. And it popped up just like it did before. Now, if you've never seen arch install, this might be new to you. But basically what you're doing is going from top to bottom, figuring out what settings you want. The first one basically just selects the language that you're going to be using. And the second one will help you find the best mirrors for your installation. Now, this is just a collection of countries at this point, And then it will just go through and test all of the mirrors in that country once you've selected one. So nothing new here, really. And it's still using the same technology you'd be using if you were installing the Arch Linux ISO the old-fashioned traditional way. Now just to note that some of the stuff I will be speeding up probably if I can figure out how to do that in Resolve so you don't have to see just one continuously scrolling line of text that takes forever because it does take forever. I will say this and this will be a little bit of a spoiler. The default for Pac-Man in the ISO is not to include parallel downloads, which I don't even begin to understand. Like they, sh like, they should turn parallel downloads on at least up to like five parallel downloads, and they don't. It's really weird. They should do that. It'd be much, much faster. Because Pac-Man supports parallel downloads, but they don't have it set that way. I don't know why. The next one is locales. Basically, this is keyboard, language, encoding, things like that. Then it's going to ask you for the partitioning. And I chose ButterFS just to see if it would work. And it, spoiler alert, it did. Now, I will say I didn't do any logical volume management or anything like that. I didn't do any encryption. There's no RAID here. So if I were to do RAID or LVM or whatever, I probably wouldn't do ButterFS. Because at least with encryption stuff, I'd want to do that stuff manually just to know that I'm doing it right. And that's just a personal preference. But uh, mostly I just set up a Butterfest with their default sub-volumes here. And once we're all done with this, I'll actually go through and see what those sub-volumes actually are. Then I'll actually select the the, group, the bootloader, just choosing Grub. I skip the swap, because I don't think I really need swap. It asks for the host name, root password, user password here. Once I've created a user, it'll ask me if I want to add it to sudo. I'll say yes. And then I'll just confirm and exit. And then I'll select a profile. Now, so here's where I made a mistake. I should have chose desktop instead of Xorg. All Xorg does is install Xorg. It doesn't actually install you a desktop environment. I made that mistake. That was on me. I should have chosen like XFC or something like that. I ended up having to choose that later on. So just know that that's the reason why I didn't choose desktop. I should have. I choose, chose Xorg instead. And then it asks you what graphics driver you want. I just left it to all open source because I'm in a VM. And then it asks you what Linux kernel you want. It offers the Linux kernel, the Linux hardened kernel, LTS, and Zen. Nothing really all that fancy here. You can install multiple kernels, which is nice. And then it allows you to install extra packages. I installed NeoVim, Firefox, Git, curl, things like that. Stuff that I would always install on every Linux installation. Frankly, I think NeoVim should be installed on every distro, but 
that's just the personal preference. So that's what I'm doing here in the B-roll. If I've timed this correctly, it just basically adds this on to the end of the install. So you don't have to do it afterwards, which is nice. Now, all of this stuff so far has been exactly like it was back when I was installing it before. I've seen no noticeable changes, which is not really all that surprising, I suppose. Because what? why would you change something that works? But still... I expected some kind of progress, especially when it comes to parallel downloads or something. I don't know, extra features or something. Uh, now, it's possible that in the desktop selector, there's maybe there's more de desktop stuff there that, than was, was there before. Because before, it was like uh, GNOME, KDE, XFC, and like i3, something like that. I wonder if there's more selection there. I'll have to go back and check. Then it's going to ask for automatic time sync, which is NTP. It basically just selects the time. Then it asks you if you want to add additional repositories. I always add those because what's the point in using Arch if you can't have all the repos? Then it asks you to save the user the configuration file for the install. So if you wanted to have that later, you could use the same file, which is nice. Once you've done that, I press install, and then we're off to the races. That's installing Arch Linux in 2024. That's really all there is to it. So I'll speed through the actual installation all this is just a line of text of it and it's actually installing stuff it does the partition stuff first and then it just installs linux that's what it does here i'll just go mention once again that i'm not sure why they don't have parallel downloads enabled because this installs probably five or six hundred packages along the line somewhere and that's without a desktop environment it would have gone a lot faster if they'd had parallel downloads. Now, I understand from an internet perspective, they want to have this set up so that it will cater to people who don't have high-speed internet. But having parallel downloads set to two or three is probably going to be good enough for everyone, and it would still make it a lot faster and basically double the speed. But they don't, which is unfortunate. I would like them to have that at least enabled as an option in the, in the installer there. That would be pretty cool, but they don't. So that's my biggest downside, and the, I think I mentioned this when I talked about it, when I did a video on this when it first came out, why they don't have that set up, and they still don't. So, there you go. Okay, so now we're going to see me correcting my mistake from earlier, because I, ch instead of having it install a desktop environment for me, I chose Xorg, so I'm going to have to actually install a desktop environment here. Now, I haven't used Arch in well over a year. No Arch exposure whatsoever. I'm an OpenSUSE guy, but here you guys are going to see me and actually trying to remember how to use Arch. It was not like riding a bike. There were several things that I completely forgot how to do, like enabling the display manager. Totally forgot how to do that, which is stupid because it's the same on every distro ever, but I totally forgot. Anyways, I installed XFC4. The good news is with it, with Arch, all desktop environments have groups. So with XFC4, you just type in XFC4. It will install all the packages that you need. It doesn't install a display manager, which is unfortunate. It should do that, but whatever. And then here in a second, once this is done, you guys will actually see me try to figure out how to start this thing with StartX. Now, back when I was an Arch user, I never used XinitRC or StartX to start. I always use a display manager, but I vaguely remember how to do it. So I tried to do it here and uh, yeah, I didn't do a good job. <laughs> At all. I completely failed. Now, the reason why I failed was because the name for XFCE is apparently something different, or I had to call something different in the X, X and RC file. I could have looked it up. I didn't do that. I just decided just to start the display manager, as you'll see here in a minute. So we'll speed through some of the stuff so that you guys don't have to see me do everything. But basically, at the end of the day, I did manage to get XFC uh, installed and up and running with GDM as the display manager, which is nice. Now, overall, that whole thing took me about ah, maybe five minutes, even with the mistakes there that I made. And it is a interesting experience, right? Because if you've been around Linux long enough and you've, you remember back in the day, Arch Linux used to be quote unquote hard to install. And when I say hard, I don't mean like Gen 2 hard or Linux from scratch hard, but I mean harder than Ubuntu, harder than OpenSUSE Fedora, right? It didn't have a graphical installer, therefore it was a little harder. You had to do all the manual partitioning yourself. You had to install the packages yourself, all this stuff. You know, it, it was a streamlined way of doing it, but it required some effort. It required you to read the instructions. You couldn't just go in and do it on your own. Now, if you knew about the Arch install script, you could theoretically do this without looking at the instructions, which 
I did. Now, granted, I have enough experience to know how to do this, basically, and it's very simple, but once you know about the Arch install script and how to start it, it's actually pretty easy to do. Now, that's really the whole point of this video, is that Arch is still very, very easy to use and very easy to install. I've always argued that the hardest part about Arch isn't the installation, it's actually the maintenance of it, because you have to pay attention to what's being updated and upgraded so that you can figure out when something breaks, what has broken it, and how to fix that, right? That's the whole difficulty of Arch. And that hasn't changed. Arch really hasn't changed since the last time I looked at it. In terms of installation, these days, if you're bragging about using Arch because it's hard to install, why? That doesn't really make much sense to me, right? So so I guess the question then becomes, can we start to recommend Arch Linux for new Linux users? And the answer to that would be yes, if the Arch Linux install script wasn't still buried. And I don't understand why it is. It really shouldn't be. Like they should in that little blurb you get when you first boot into the ISO, there should be there should be something that says type arch install to begin. That's all they got to do. Add one line and it would be good. The fact that that's not there leads me to believe that they still don't want people to use Ar the arch install script. Why that is, I don't know. I'm not embroiled in the Arch community anymore like I used to be. I don't interact in the forums anymore like I used to. So I don't have much to go on when it comes to, you know, why they've chosen to make that decision. But they, it, it could be as simple as they don't want new users to use Arch or they want to have new users put in some effort to get to that point, even if they still use the Arch install script because it shows them that they have the ability to... Uh, persevere when it comes to installing and maintaining Arch. So maybe that's the reason why. Maybe they just don't want to. Maybe there's no grand reason why. I don't know. Anyways, that's how you install Arch Linux in 2024. Is it the same as it was in 2023 and 2022 and 2021? Yeah. And I suppose that's a good reason why I did this video. Just kind of to revisit it. And I was very curious to see if anything had changed. And the answer to that question is... Not really. So there you go. Maybe stuff under, I should say, maybe there's some stuff underneath the hood that has changed. I don't know. I'm not technological like that, so I can't tell you. I, I'm not a developer, but from a consumer facing position, it looks exactly the same as it did when it first came out, or at least mostly. So there you go. So if you have any thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuscast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me there. I really, truly do appreciate it. Without you guys, the channel is not anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. If you too would like to support the channel, you can... Again, support me on Patreon. I have links for Kofi and YouTube as well. Those links will be in the video description. Or you can head on over to the shop, which is available at shop.thelinuscast.org. There you'll find all sorts of awesome merchandise, all sales for which goes directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very, very much for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.